my father, who's a combat veteran of Vietnam. And when I was a really young kid, I remember my father sitting there in the dark, drunk, needing to tell me something, you know, some truth he just pulled out of this jungle in his mind. He was basically reliving these 20-year-old decisions that he'd made. At that part of the Marine Corps' history, they weren't into teaching cultural sensitivity. It was attack and kill. And the Viet Cong, they wanted to attack and kill also, which is the basis for war. My father was a draft dodger. And through the whole experience of the 60s, the civil rights movement, and then I think most strongly Vietnam, his sense of believing in American life was shattered, so he decided he would go to Canada. So in a way, that's sort of my first experience of Vietnam when I was born in Montreal. I had been involved in a number of demonstrations and other actions that sort of were getting ugly. I mean, it was getting bad. So when the time came when I decided I didn't want to go to Vietnam, I decided to go to Montreal, and I really thought that was it. I mean, I never thought I was coming back. The whole experience of Vietnam, I think that personal thing of our generation, trying to get back and understand that, maps itself onto American history at this point. And I think there's a real sense of our wanting to go back to them and experience them. And one of the things we latched onto was an idea of writing a piece about the 30th anniversary of the Fall of Saigon. Let's go back to this place and see what really has happened. But there is a sense in which we're coming to these questions from a different place. Even fact of our fathers coming from such a different place. This kind of ended us up in a lot of the same thoughts. Yeah, all stuff for the 30th anniversary. There's the palace again. But writing about the Vietnam War at a time when the United States is involved in a war with another country is, of course, a kind of tricky thing. It's probably Tom. Hello? Yeah, we're being expelled from the country. Our passports have been stamped, that our visa is revoked. They've been watching us from day one, buddy. They've had secret police trailing us nonstop. We should probably meet and talk a little bit, you know, not on the phone. <laughs> 